welcome and good morning my friends welcome back to the, another episode of songs of psalms i am so grateful to be back for another day and i'm glad that you are here with me as well so welcome back to songs of psalms we are on psalm 94 part 2 today we're going to be talking about the lord the judge right everybody thinks of god as a compassionate wonderful father and he is he's a wonderful compassionate father but he's also the king of all the universe and he's also a judge and actually he has appointed judgment to his son jesus christ and so we're going to talk a little bit about that today um <clears throat> today's part two of psalm 94 so we're going to read a couple of verses in part two of psalm 94 and um let me just recap a little bit of what we talked about yesterday so yesterday we began psalm 94 and we were talking about bernie madoff you can go back and and watch that again it's on my Facebook page, it's on my YouTube page, um, but we were talking about Bernie Madoff and he was the person that pulled off the biggest financial scam in history of all mankind, right? And, and after it was discovered that he lied and he really wasn't managing $68 billion worth of assets, he actually lost all that money right that had been entrusted to him he had he, the money disappeared by the things that he was doing and and the um <clears throat> the lies that he told and so it became a nightmare not just to him but to the people the victims that had given him money the people that had you know invested their life's savings there were teachers there were um retired business owners small business owners big business owners uh, there was just this whole community and there was also super rich billionaires that he was managing their money for um, a lot of them made money because they were giving him money but they were also taking back more than what they had put in and so you know but it's for the the the, the smaller people in that mix of people they they lost everything you know they thought that their money was being safely deposited in investment accounts and basically you know he wasn't he wasn't doing what he said he was doing and you know you can imagine the betrayal the betrayal that people felt when they knew that he just you know he didn't do what he was supposed to do and so you know here we have a person that 20 years got away with this entire scam 20 years worth of lies and deception 20 years worth right the biggest crook anyone has ever seen in their lifetime and uh, he got he got away with it but right you can only get away with something for so long and it, it what happened to him was really really sad and I not just to him I felt bad for everybody involved but really for him that he could stoop so low and do such a thing to humanity to his fellow mankind to his brothers and sisters to his you know it's just so sad so sad you know he didn't start as a crook you know you never start as a bad person but in the end you sometimes make decisions that that become poor decisions and I believe that his pride and his arrogance really led him to to think that he could just get away with it you know I, I believe that his pride just it, he couldn't admit that he was doing wrong he didn't really want to be a failure he wanted to just you know do whatever he could to keep the keep the fake um, investments up right like he he was just trying to do what he could to keep it going for as long as he could I, I mean I, I really honestly don't know what he was thinking he probably doesn't know what he was thinking but in the end it cost him his life it cost him his family um, and it was sad it was sad and so in Psalm 95 we're I'm sorry Psalm 94 we're talking about 
the Lord the judge because sometimes you know there's things out of our control that we just can't you know we we can't uh, do anything about and with in the situation where Bernie Madoff there was things that could have been done but the authorities the federal government all of these people they really had an opportunity to step in and stop him for what he was doing and they didn't and so that's why he got away with so much but you know you can get away with so much for so long until the father the heavenly father steps in and you know in life there's gonna be people that are gonna break our trust right people that we know that are gonna do things they're gonna they're gonna uh, do an injustice to us there may be people we love that may bring us harm and and betray our trust right and there's gonna be others that we don't know that are gonna make decisions that are gonna harm us that are going to personally betray us when we've put the, our trust in him maybe, you know sometimes there's products that we buy and we think that they're good for us and then we find out that there was something in the product that was just not good for us and so were they trying to help us or were they trying to make a profit right and a lot of times that's what happens there's going to be people in our life that may bring us harm leaders that may bring us harm teachers that may bring us harm businesses companies products like i said that may bring us harm politicians that may bring us harm and so what do we do do we take matters into our own hand or do we let do we let god handle it right i mean i wish we all we can all meet everyone who had a good heart and would do right by us but, but, you know, we live in a world that's full of evil and there's just people that are, that have bad intentions and they're just only thinking about themselves and they're only thinking about greed and, and, and having more money and having more power. And so it's, it's something that is going to be out of our control. But when someone does us harm to us personally or to our family member or to our children, what do we do? Do we retaliate? Do we pay evil for evil? And that's what this psalmist, the, the psalmist who wrote Psalm 94, he was struggling with that. He was struggling with that. He, he wanted vengeance because of all the things that were happening around that time, around his, around society, you know? He wanted vengeance and he begins to name a few situations let me just read again Psalm 94 and this is what the psalmist says he says the Lord is a God who avenges oh God who avenges shine forth rise up judge of the earth pay back to the proud what they deserve how long Lord will the wicked how long will the wicked be jubilant verse 4 they pour out arrogant words all the evildoers are full of boasting they crush your people Lord they oppress your inheritance they slay the widow and the foreigner they they murder the fatherless they say the Lord does not see the God of Jacob takes no notice Right? So he's naming all of these things. He's standing up because he's seeing everything that's happening around the society, around the people of his time. And he's like, rise up, judge. What, what, Lord, what are you doing? What are, are you letting these people get away with this stuff? Right? Are you letting them get away? Rise up and shine forth. Show forth your judgment. And so he begins to name a couple of things, situations here where he wants to see God execute vengeance. He, he's talking about the proud, right? He's like, how, how long will the wicked be jubilant? They pour out arrogant words. All the evil doers are full of boasting. You know, they're proud. You know, he's talking about the proud, the wicked, the oppressor, the murderer, the ones that are doing things to, to bring even more harm to people that are in a, in a bad situation. He's like, 
you know, they're murdering the fatherless. The fatherless are already in a bad situation. Why are you going to make their situation worse? And so he's angry and he's like, rise up, shine forth, do what you're supposed to do. He's like, Lord, you need to do something about these people because they're getting away with things. Look at what they're doing. You're the king and you're the judge. Execute vengeance upon them. And you know, sometimes we feel like that. We feel like, God, what, you know, why, why are you not, why are you not doing something right away? Why, why is it that they're getting away with it? Why is it that, that they get to enjoy their wickedness, enjoy being evil? Why is it that they, you know, while somebody's situation is bad and they're making their situation worse, why is it that they're allowed? But we talked a little bit about this yesterday and we talked about how, you know, God is patient He's patient is, and he doesn't execute judgment right away because he's loving and compassionate. And he is waiting for people to turn around and repent from their own sins. Because when he executes judgment, that is it for them. There's no second chance. There's no opportunity. When he, they get to face him face to face, that's it. It is over. So let me just read a little bit on um, verses 8 through 11. The psalmist says, now he's, first he was talking to God, right? But now he's talking to society, to the people, right? And he says, take notice, you senseless people, you senseless ones among the people, you fools. When will you become wise? Does he who fashioned the ear not hear? Does he who formed the eye not see? Does he who disciplines nations not punish? Does he who teaches mankind lack knowledge? The Lord knows all human plans. He knows that they are futile. And I'm going to stop right there. Because I love I love this about this psalmist. Like first he's he's telling God, he's just having this amazing conversation with the Father. He's having this amazing, first he's like, God, look at what they're doing. Look at what the proud are doing, the arrogant, the boastful, the murderer. Look at all of these things that they're doing. And then he takes the conversation and he turns it around and he's like, all right, y'all, let me tell you something. <laughs> he's like, when will you become wise? Like, when will you not realize that what you're doing is, you, you know, you're going to get paid back for it. You're going to get paid back for it. He's like, does he who, does he who fashioned the ear not hear? <laughs> does, does he who formed the eye not see? Like, what do you think that? That there's, there's no consequence, that there's no one that's watching you, and there's no consequence for what you're going to do? Do you think you're going to get away with it? That's what he's saying. He's like, you think you're going to get away with it? Does he who disciplines nations not punish? So he's like, y'all better be wisen up because you're running out of time. You're running out of time. And so, you know, it takes me back to Bernie Madoff and, and like, you know, how I just, I wish I could understand. I wish I could hear what he had to say about his condition. I honestly, let me, you know, I have to play the devil's advocate. I honestly believe he didn't want to scam people, but he really was the kind of person who wanted to help people. He was the kind of, he had goodness in him. But his goodness turned sour. Like his goodness turned bad because he found a way to help, but it was the wrong way. And then he got so deep into it, he didn't know how to backtrack and get out of it. You know, he I, I believe that he wanted, you know, in the Netflix documentary, it said that he wanted to, you know, he saw that his father was a failure. And his father tried to have several businesses and just failed. And in the end, he was just like, you know, I'm not going to be a failure. And so he did whatever he had to do not to fail. But it just, you know, it just turned really bad. And so 
at some point it got so so bad I think he thought he could just get away with scamming people but what if what did he think would happen you know I, I do believe he did not believe in God because if he did right he would have had the fear of the Lord will, will God not defend his people will God not stand up for his people and in the end you know Bernie got away he did get away for many years with this in this horrific horrific scam but I, I hope I pray I hope that while he was in jail and while he, his life was you know um, his life just became nothing I pray that he reflected on what he did and that he he truly I believe that perhaps maybe he asked for forgiveness for what he did I pray that he did you know when you have the fear of the Lord you're, you're gonna walk and do what's right because you know that God is watching and that and, and let me tell you if you didn't know this God has appointed his son Jesus as judge not only is Jesus our Savior our deliverer our healer our helper our, 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 our strong tower our you know but he's also a judge and every single human being that has ever lived will have to stand before Jesus who is the great judge and will have to give an account for their lives every single person we all have to stand before the judge and give an account of how we lived our lives and if you don't believe me um, let, let's look at a scripture here I'm gonna to read to you and we're almost done here first Peter chapter 4 verses 5 first Peter chapter 4 verses 5 it says but remember that they will have to face God who stands ready to judge everyone both the living and the dead we all have to face God y'all we all have to face God we all have to face him and the living and the dead <laughs> we all have to face him. second Corinthians 510 I the second Corinthians 510 tells us for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive his due for the things done in the body whether good or bad I mean that puts fear in me y'all to know you know if you know this and you know that you're gonna live your life a little bit different when you know these things that's why we have to teach these things we got to teach people the way to live that's why the Word of God is very important because it teaches us the things that we don't know if Bernie knew this if Bernie Madoff knew this would he would he have changed would he have been a little bit different would he have done things differently would he have confessed a little sooner like y'all listen thank you for entrusting me with your money but <laughs> y'all ain't getting the money back <laughs> I feel like he probably believed that um, maybe he'll just die and it'll all go away but it would have felt fallen upon his family his sons his his wife you know I don't know but 2nd Corinthians 5 10 tells us we must all we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive his due for the things done in the body whether good or bad we all have to stand before God so with that you know knowing that it should change how we do certain things especially secret things the things that you know um nobody's watching that nobody's watching you know when we're little we do little things right like you think your mom's not watching your dad's not watching and you're like you're sneaking and doing the thing the very thing that they told you not to do right we've all done that as children and stuff like that but there's adults that <laughs> that have grown up like that you know you take something here oh nobody's looking well guess what God is looking <laughs> he is looking and because he sees all things right 
And we thank God that he gave us Jesus because Jesus forgives us for our sin. When you do something wrong and you confess your sin, then you're good, you're good, you're good, right? You confess your sin, but, you know, we're going to be judged for the things we do, whether good or bad. Last scripture, last scripture, Matthew 16, Matthew 16, 27. And Jesus said this, all right? Jesus said this. This is what he said. He said, for the Son of Man will come in his Father's glory with his angels and then he will repay each one according to what he has done for the son of man will come in his father's glory with his angels he was specific he said i'm coming back with with god's angels with my father's angels and then i will repay each one according to what he has done so let me take this back to what we were saying Listen, when somebody harms you, right? Don't take matters into your own hands. When somebody does something to hurt you, to offend you, to rob you, to, you know, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is, when somebody hurts you, when somebody betrays your trust, do not take matters into your own hands. You don't have to take revenge. You don't have to pay back the evil with evil why because Jesus who is the great judge he's gonna execute justice on your behalf and you may not see right you may not see when Jesus executes that judgment on your behalf you may not see it in your lifetime maybe it's when that person stands before Jesus upon you know when he dies and he stands before Jesus um, and that's when Jesus will execute judge, judgment. So you may not see it. But, but if you don't see it, don't do anything about it. Give it to the Lord. Let him handle it. Or if you do see that Jesus does execute judgment, don't sit there and laugh and be like, you see, you got what you deserve. Because even that's sinful to the Lord. We read yesterday that it is his desire that no one perishes. Why? Because when Jesus punishes someone, it's going to be an eternal punishment. There's no backing out. There's no backing out of that judgment or that punishment. So, yeah. And, and if we were to take matters into our own hands, you know what? We're, we're going to get ourselves in trouble, right? We, we will get ourselves in trouble. If we do it, if we if we were to do something to pay somebody back for what they did, we just give it to the Lord. We just give it to Jesus. Let him handle it. Let let him take care of it. If he wants to extend mercy, then pray that you will be okay with him extending mercy to that person. But if they don't repent, then they're gonna get they're gonna face the wrath of God's judgment. And it is, it's not going to be good. But at least we know that he has our back, right? That he has our back. He's going to defend his people. And he's going to act rightly and justly because of his great mercy and compassion. Amen? And amen. Okay. That's it. Hopefully, we'll come back tomorrow and we can wrap this up. We still have several more verses to go, but I think it's important for us to understand the nature of God, because if we know who he is and, and how he does things, then I think it changes our lives, and I believe that it will give us peace to know, right? If you see something that hurts you or hurt your family member, something that, that you're facing, a betrayal, someone broke your trust someone stole from you whatever situation it is know that the lord is a judge right the lord the judge he will judge on your behalf and he will handle the situation just let him handle it all right my friends so that's it that's all i have thank you for listening i couldn't see my comments so if you're leaving comments i apologize i can't see them but I thank you. <laughs> I thank you for it. 
So listen, you have a blessed day. And let me just bless you as we go out of here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you shalom, his perfect peace. Ciao, ciao. God willing, I'll see you mañana. Ciao.